the three-phase transformer YY connection and the introduction to the infamous square root 3. Module 3. Be sure to check out the resources section under this video for helpful comments, suggestions, and clarifications. We talked about voltages and current quantities in the last module. In this module, we'll cover voltages and current quantities from a different perspective. Let's begin by illustrating winding A. The polarity side of winding A is indicated by a round dot, and this small box here indicates the bushing of winding A. Similarly, we'll illustrate winding B and winding C. In this illustration, we're not going to cover secondary windings. The non-polarity side of all three windings are connected together by a neutral wire, and the neutral wire is grounded. The voltage developed across winding A is our phase A voltage, measured from the polarity side to the non-polarity side of winding A. Similarly, we have phase B voltage and phase C voltage. Line A, line B, and line C are all connected to their respective bushings. For a Y-connected transformer, we can expect that the line-to-line -line current and phase current to be equal. This illustration shows very clearly that the line-to-line -line current for line A flows directly into the polarity side of winding A. So for a Y-connected transformer, we can expect that the line-to-line -line currents equal the phase currents. We understand that phase voltages are measured across transformer windings while line-to-line -line voltages are measured across two different lines. For a Y-connected transformer, we can expect that the line-to-line -line voltage to be different than the phase voltage. It's very clear from this illustration that the line-to-line -line voltage across line A and line B encompasses phase A winding and phase B winding. And from our last module, we understood that the line-to-line -line voltage across line A and line B is equal to phase A voltage minus phase B voltage. Let's look closely at this equation from a following perspective. We'll label the point of measurements for the line-to-line -line voltage as point A and point B. Now relatively speaking, we can expect that the voltage on point A and the voltage on the bushing of winding A to be the same, right? So what about the voltage on the polarity side of winding A respectively? We're pretty confident that it's pretty much the same voltage since it's the same point on the line. Now what if we measure the voltage from the polarity side of winding A to the non-polarity side of winding A? We'll get a different voltage. To be very clear, we'll get phase A voltage. At this point, we're on the non-polarity side of winding A, where the neutral wire is connected to ground. Now if we measure the voltage between the non-polarity side of winding B and the polarity side of winding B, we'll get a negative phase B voltage because the polarity marks are opposite. Okay, so now let's connect the dots. Let's start at point A, which is pretty much the same point as the point on the polarity side of winding A. We'll measure across the polarity side to the non-polarity side of winding A to get a phase A voltage. Okay, so now we measure from the non-polarity side of winding B to the polarity side of winding B to get to point B. And the voltage from the non-polarity side of winding B to the polarity side of winding B is a negative phase B voltage. And that's why the line-to-line -line voltage across line A and line B is equal to phase A voltage minus phase B voltage. Phase A voltage is considered as a positive value, whereas phase B voltage is considered as a negative value. Some of us may ask, well, why are we going over the obvious? Because for me, this concept was difficult and vague when I was learning it. It was easier for me to attribute phase A voltage as a positive value and phase B voltage as a negative value when I started thinking about polarity marks and the point of measurements. 
Also, transformer connections can get very complex very easily. It's incredibly important for us to understand the fundamentals intuitively so we can navigate through complex connections with some level of confidence. For practice, let's try using this technique. For the line to line voltage across line B and line C, as well as the line to line voltage across line A and line C. In this module, we looked at voltages and current quantities from a different perspective. In the next module, we'll evaluate the line to line voltage equation. Thank you. This module was brought to you by GeneralPack.com, making power systems intuitive.